simple route of just using units directly. And no, he's sending off one of the PCMs. He's definitely fired off one of them and setting off so the propagation happens in the unplayable past. Not sure where that was set off to though. Crown Aberrant, looks like that might have happened earlier, but it didn't really do anything. Crown Aberrant will be focusing very heavily on this frontal expansion. That's going to be his main expansion. This triad here still will be hidden, still be hard for Ferritor to deal with, but Ferritor might be aware there's something going on here. He is definitely aware there's a massive amount of Octopods and Faros coming into his main expansion. They will be able to tear this down in no time unless Ferda does something with the Chrono Porting, which he clearly has done. At least with the attack with the Plasma Cruise Missile, but he hasn't actually Chrono Ported any major units yet. And he hasn't actually built up any... Well, other than this one Octoligo, hasn't built up much from beyond that. I don't know if he's going to be building more of those, if he's going to be building up more Sepuligos and Farligos. Which, Sepuligos and Farligos would be a thing to build. I definitely recommend it, but... Octoligos are still strong, especially with chronoporting, especially with these teleporters here. You might just teleport those right in, right behind the forces, and there comes that plasma cruise missile dealing minimal damage to these units over here. So clearly, Ferritor well aware of these units, which he must be, because the comp center was destroyed. They have to be destroyed by something. But unfortunately, timing that a bit off and not dealing with the juiciest targets. Still, or this triad right here is very juicy. Still, he does have the Autoligos coming in that will be effective defense, especially with Chrono Porting, he will be able to just deal with this without too much issue, and since it's a backup triad, completely away from the main target that Chrono Aberrant has taken for himself, I think Ferritor might actually have a really good chance here, but overall, this is just going to be one massive group of units. And here goes Ferritor's Chrono Port, he is definitely pushing back, looks like all of his units here, he's definitely got the money for it. We'll see what he actually does though, and... No, instead he's moving them moving them here, probably going to teleport them, and then Chronoport. And then he has, likely he has queued orders after that point. Now Chrono Aberrant's force is coming in here, dealing with damage they can, and like I said, they're going to be tearing apart this expansion in no time once that comes up, but this teleportation is going to be pretty curious. I'm... I can see Ferda doing a lot with that, but I think that it's going to be... a very powerful attack. I don't know if Chrono Aberrant's going to lose to it. His natural expansion might be going down as a result, but... It's really a question of what he will do with this. And here comes the main assault that is Octopods and Faros and no, teleporter! Oh, Ferda was teleporting stuff around, but not seeing it now. I don't see what he's actually done with it. He seems to have not propagated that. And Chrono Aberrant able to destroy Ferda's entire expansion. Here's a Ferda running out of his economy. He has no economic base at this point. No RPs. And this is really bad for him. He needs to Chrono That's his only saving grace. And it looks like he actually did manage to deal a fair amount of damage to this... Did he deal damage to the base in the back? He had teleported stuff around, and... Yes, he did manage to get rid of this natural expansion, so Crown Aberrant losing his main economic base as well. But Ferrer not able to command it very much. One order, however, will be able to deal with this. He will be able to take care of Crown Aberrant's economic base as well, so both players getting rid of each other's economy. Octoligos from Ferrer doing what they can to defend, but are still going down to the Octopods. Dealing a lot of damage, however, but there's too many Octopods to deal with, and... Here comes the Chrono Port Octopod, not doing anything at all. Still, the major attack from the front is going to be able to take care of everything that was here. And did Chrono Port... Chrono Port appears to have actually Chrono Port back a bunch of units himself. Yes, Chrono Porting back a bunch of Octopods to help deal with the force that Ferritor has. Nice re Porting assault. And Ferritor looks like he is actually re Porting back all the units he had to help themselves out back in the Impalable Pass, back to the 20-minute 20, 20 mark or so. And I still think Chrono Port will be winning this engagement. All of his buildings are moving towards his expansion here, and he is still damaging everything that Ferritor had in this expansion over here. And near the Unplayable Past, he will have these... These are Chrono Porting back, so... This is definitely going to be very large. This is it. I think Ferritor has lost this game. I think Chrono may be winning the tournament from here, but really it's a matter of whether this production gets destroyed. Ferritor still has a chance. He can still PCM out these Octopods. He can still build up a ton of units and take care of them, build up a bunch of Faro Legos, for example, and take care of the Octopods. But there goes the PCM. PCM being sent over to this expansion here, trying to get rid of the rest of Crimer's economic base. Ferritor well aware of what exists, and that PCM dealing no damage. What happened there? It clearly was just out of position, not dealing enough damage, not targeting the right target. And... Wow, I'm getting lightheaded from how excited I'm getting. Sorry guys, one sec, just need to... Need to get myself, get my breath back, because this is, this is huge. Like, these are the Octopods we saw before, and they are definitely winning this fight. So, Ferritor not able to get rid of Crown Aberrant's economic base, but Crown Aberrant 
having gotten rid of Ferreter's economy, he's going to be in a great spot right now. And Ferreter is just... Wow, Ferreter, I mean, well done for Ferreter at this point, but I think Ferreter has lost his however. Still trying, sending back Farpods, sending them over here. Won't be enough, however, with all the defense forces that Cronenberg has because they, you know, Cronenberg are back to help themselves out. But Ferreter trying what he can. And actually, Ferreter managing to Cronenberg back. Cronenberg back enough Farpods to deal a fair amount of damage dealing with the RPs. He will ultimately get rid of the RPs, but still, Cronenberg has a chance to help defending against this. The Farpods dealing a punch of damage, though, and Cronenberg having his economic base that he needs still has a chance to get out of this. But he lost one of his production triads, or is losing one of his production triads, and Cronenberg might be Cronenberg back to help save this, but I think this base is gone. Ferreter managing to get the upper hand ultimately with Cronoports and taking care of that base. Still has the production center he had, and no economy though. This is the big, big difference. Ferreter has no economy right now, so even though he does have that Cronoport that came back here and dealt a lot of damage, which I don't see anymore. Actually, for that matter, I don't know where it's going. Here's the PCM I mentioned before, which didn't really do much, but where is that Cronoport? This is that first Cronoport we saw earlier, but Ferreter... I think Ferreter may have actually thrown everything into a bit of a paradox, having possibly killed off some of the units and taken advantage... Yeah, that's what must have to happen. He killed off the Octopods early on in that first assault, causing him to have a bit of an opening to deal with... to Cronoport units back and deal damage to what's going... Like this attack here in the one instance where it was successful, which actually appears to be the instance that's fallen off the timeline, so... The Paradox has resolved in Ferreter's favor, getting rid of Cronamorant's main bait or main expansion ultimately. Though Cronamorant's still dealing a fair amount of damage, but it looks like Ferreter still managed to get rid of a lot of what Cronamorant had built up. So Ferreter, what we see here is not the likely result. The likely result is from the Red Time Wave, wherein he managed to win this fight and deal a lot of damage, though still losing this base here. The Octon Legos, however, we want to watch them because he might be able to win and... No, it doesn't look like they did. Crime are actually moving away, so he can't actually see what happened there. But still, that is huge. And Ferreter finding Crown Aberrant's Triad. I don't know what Crown Aberrant can do to get out of this. This base really... Like I said, I think the Paradox went in Crown Aberrant's... Went against Crown Aberrant. I think Ferreter has won this part. And losing one of his production... Actually, losing all of his Triads... I think... Crown Aberrant... Wrenching a chat that he was sitting in the past edge to try to rewrite things in his own favor, but even with that, well, it's still pretty tight. But it looks like ultimately Ferreter watching as everything's starting to crumble somewhat, but he still has. It's still not a bad position. It's not the worst position it could be in. There is still room for some damage for Ferreter to deal. It's, he dealt a fair amount of damage to this backside here, got rid of quite a few of the Octopods. So it's not like Crown Abbott managed to get it completely in his favor, but it looks like ultimately it did work out mostly for him. But it's not completely in his favor. And a Chronomom has been fired off. Had been fired off to this base here. Cryomer using one of those. Not a bad idea. But Ferreter really only losing a couple RPs in the meantime. Which is fairly large. But at this point he has hardly anything right now for economy. And the Octopod coming in. Sepipod's coming around and trying to deal with the can. Cryomer looks like he might be able to. with, Given that ultimately it's gone in his favor. Looks like Cryomer will be able to rebuild up what he needs to, and everything else is just there. Cryabrant, yes, he has everything he needs, so he could just... If he pushes out and gets rid of this triad here, and the main base triad as well, then he's won this game. This very, very exciting game. Oh, hey, I probably should point out, I didn't realize these, there were these neutral units here. I, it's another part of the map that's the case. That actually has been the case for a while, there were neutral units, but they have been shifted around a fair bit. And they're sort of there for decoration, nothing else. But, like I said, fair to find in Crown Aberrant's Triad, and I think... <laughs> and yes, Crown Aberrant, this is old school Akron. This is massive Chrono porting. This is larger armies. This is... This is how it should happen. Yeah, at the 30 minute mark, this is how it should happen. Not at the 5 minute mark. At the 30 minute mark, this is where it should happen to be exciting and to... Holy crap, this is, this is huge. I... I apologize if I lose consciousness as a result of the awesomeness of this game. Start right back, so we just had Cronaveron and Ferreter basically trying to go at each other, trying to get rid of everything. Cronaveron actually getting hit by a Chrono Bomb as well from the looks of it. So both players really trying to do what they can with Chrono Porting shenanigans to just get rid of their opponent completely. Cronaveron apparently having taken this main base, the green timer will really show it. 
But apparently this base here has been secured. And Cronomer actually finding the triad, the production triad, the secondary one. I'm oh, sorry about that. <laughs> finding the secondary triad with not much trouble, but he does he will still have to get through that, and there's a lot of defense there. I mean there's the octos and the octopus here. But Cronomer's octopus should be able to get through, especially with chronoporting. So it's gonna be another chronoport battle for who can actually get through this. And it looks like Ferrer is. What is he dealing damage? He has some damage being dealt. Let's get his damaging the expansion here. So Crimer losing the expansion over to the northwest. Ferrer getting his natural expansion being more produced, but a, a small Octopod army coming down here to take out the main completely. That will not last long, and I should say the attack will be fine, but the units won't last long. And Ferrer teleporting over to the main base, but finding nothing there. So he's got to change up this teleporter to actually send it to somewhere useful. However, he does. He does have one of his octopods as a leader of the Arcticus, so we can use that for teleportation dispatch. But instead, choosing to attack directly rather than teleporting in. And his main production structure, he's going to intercept Carnavorant's octopod attack, while at the same time, octopods from Carnavorant are taking on the main base, having Chronoport back in order to do so. So it will be very effective, and Ferrer also Chronoporting back a bunch of units near here. Now, Carnavorant, further in the past, focused on. Let's see, where's he focused on? He has his octopods. He's watching, see what they do. Sparpot here dealing a fair amount of damage to the Reese, but should be still healable at this point. And Ferreter will be losing. These Octopods coming up here should be probably taking out Ferreter's production fairly quickly. Now, Ferreter has moved his Octopods over to Crown Aberrant's natural here. We'll be taking a lot of damage from the domes, but they should be able to get through decently well enough. Enough of them will be able to get through to deal some damage, and Crimer has not attacked the... He has not been attacking this this triad here. He needs to attack that triad. That's going to win the game if he does so. But if he doesn't, that could still give Ferret a chance. However, attacking the main base quite heavily will still be a massive boon to him. Ferret, of course, has very little QP, having very little economy in general. So Crimer has pretty much the chronoporting war in his hands right now. No real concerns there. Just a bit surprised he hasn't just moved forward and chronally attacked this area here. Now, Ferreter jumping back and Chronoporting back a Farpod to help deal with the Octopods here, but not sure how much this is going to do. It will be able to help get rid of the Octopods, but the Octopods should still be able to deal a fair amount of damage. And regardless, it looks like Chronoporting has managed to actually get a lot of the damage undone near the Unplayable Past. But Ferreter... I say Chronoporting getting his own damage against him undone, but there's that Farpod damage right here. That's going to be a fair amount. That's going to be quite problematic to deal with. Now, Crimer is still not attacking here. They're still not attacking this triad. And now attacking with both the Octopods and their Chrono Clones. But we can see that Ferret are double checking when the, the Farpod came in here. But the Octopods coming in, the original Octopods are still able to deal enough damage that it, it's still quite a bit of damage to deal with. Crimer, if Chrono Clones back, a Sepipod will win this fight outright. But it doesn't look like he has any in production. He doesn't have any spires nearby. Well, he has spire, one spire near one of his triads, but he doesn't have any sepipods coming up. If he had a few of those, sent those over here, chronoported them back over to the Farapod, that could work well. But right now he doesn't have that. There's octopods running around the map, trying to take care of everything that's around here. Also trying to re-expand to the southwest, to the northwest base. Southwest being completely Ferreters. And Ferreter... Oh, okay. Ferreter's still losing that Arcticus. Despite the Octopods, they're one of the Octopods trying to get rid of Farapod before it deals damage, and Chron Aberrant has managed to Chronoport back, back only one of the Octopods, so much less damage dealt, but it looks like ultimately he will still be dealing quite a lot of damage to Ferreter's main base. So Ferreter really only has this production area and this natural expansion for economy, while Chron Aberrant has most of the map. So it's still going to be a little while before Chron Aberrant wins completely, but it looks like Cronomer is definitely in the lead. Oh, and it also looks like he man accidentally set up one of his triads. There's no Seppi nearby. What? Hmm. That's bizarre. I wonder which... Oh, never mind. He's trying to do a dispatch. He's trying to do a reef dispatch, but he has no Seppis on here that are not in progeneration mode. Which means it won't work. All the Seppis are progening right now for some reason. Hmm. <clears throat> Similarly with Octos, all of his Octos are in progen mode right now. 
But it looks like Ferreter will be losing most of his main base. Yes, his main base is ultimately being damaged. Crown Aberrant will have that damage propagate forward completely. So Ferreter losing his main base production. And Crown Aberrant not quite destroying this secondary triad yet, but I'm sure he will fairly soon. Ferreter trying to do what he can to patrol around with Sepipods, but once Sepis get there, they won't be enough. And Octopods coming in will be fighting out the Sepipods. 36 minute mark here, and the Sepipod will be going down. I expect there to be a Chrono Port of that Sepipod, but it's hard to say. Ferreter doesn't have a lot of resources, and he needs to use all of them wisely if he wants to get out of this. But I think he may be falling too far behind. If he retakes his expansion here, he might have a chance, but even then, it's still rather difficult to do so. He's still fighting an uphill battle at this point compared to Chrono Aberrant, who has Chrono Porting and everything, and there's nowhere that is really a suitable hiding spot, especially once Chrono Aberrant is patrolling around. He finds anything that happens around the map, he can just Chrono Port back and deal with it. That's true for Ferreter as well, but Chrono Chron Aberrant's on the front foot here. Ferreter's kind of... Like I said, he's going to be fighting an uphill battle in order to get back in this game. Right now, all he has is this triad here that Chrono Aberrant has simply has not been too keen to attack. He's been very reluctant about going for it. Which, like I said, is kind of surprising. Losing one of his Octopods to the Sepipod, the rest of them going over to try to protect this expansion, but Chrono Aberrant could win the game right now. The main base having been completely destroyed, like I said, this... That Chrono, that Chrono Port Assault and going back and forth with the Chrono Ports ultimately going in Chrono Aberrant's favor, taking out Ferreter's main permanently. Ferreter does not have very much to work with anymore. These Octos are his only real attack force, and I think that will be... I think it will be it. I mean, there's Seppi's coming up, building more reefs here. This expansion is going to be secure very soon. And the main expansion being attacked, taking a lot of damage. These Octos can only deal so much damage before they're able, before they're taken out by the Domes and Faros. And two of the Faros going down, but all of the Octos will be going down before anything else dies. Although one of the Octos managing to get away. I think Ferreter might be retreating with those Octos. But no, he's continuing along with them. Really, there's not much else he can do other than use them to expand. And he is setting up reefs to get himself a secure position to expand in, but he doesn't have much else. The Farpaw's also helping out. No, surprisingly, no detection nearby. No Cephys either. All these units in progen mode. But this is... And an Arctic is accidentally being built right on top of a reef. That won't work very well. So here we see Ferreter is, in fact, going to rebuild this expansion here, using the Arctic as a distraction, as well as the Farpod as a distraction. But I'm still not sure that will be enough. Just... With all the strength that Chrono Aberrant has, and the Chrono Porting that he has, I think he can just be able to take care of this before it's even a threat, before it even comes up, really. Though Chrono Aberrant not fully aware of what's going on here, and he doesn't have any legal class units. Neither player has actually used the legal class they've built. However, Chrono Aberrant does send out a Plasma Crucible to help finish off these Octos before they're even a problem. So, at least that will help. Losing only one Faro in the process, and these Octos will be going down far faster than they did the first time around. But Chronomart needs to get his units chronoported back and just deal with this triad. I don't know why he has not dealt with that triad yet. I don't know if he's a, not aware of it. He hasn't scouted enough. I didn't really see him scout that, but I'm sure he's aware of what's going on. And here's another Chrono Bomb from Ferreter taking out this Arcticus completely, which will slow down Chronomart a bit, because it will mess up his command structure, but really all he needs is a couple Faropods, really. That's it. A couple Faropods, go here, chronoport back, kill everything. Done. Game over. Ferreter, on the other hand, trying to take out this expansion here, but getting scattered by Faros, moving over to the natural during the Chrono Bomb period, but it's not really working out from the looks of it. I mean, the Chrono Bomb did its job somewhat, but it's... I mean, where Ferreter is looking, there is no Arcticus and no Reefs. So he could deal a fair amount of meaningful damage there, because the Reefs aren't there to heal, but... Is he doing so? Yes, he is actually sending a Faro and Faropod, and it's dead. Faropod does not actually survive very long. It... Didn't attack directly from the side. Getting rid of the Spire would have been a great idea, but Chrono Porting back, bad, this is a terrible idea because he needed this timing where there wasn't the Reefs. And now he's Chrono Porting back to a place where there were Reefs and there were enough units to defend. And the Dome too, the Dome's gone. Domes, plural. So he had perfect timing if he had attacked from the side here and just gone for it. But that Chrono Port, that was definitely a bad time to try to do a Chrono Rush, or not Chrono Rush, an Uppercut because he didn't have the units gone at that point. So I think that this is going to be Ferreter losing that Faropod. There's nothing you can do from there. Really, at this point, it's Crown Aberrant's game to lose, and I'm a bit surprised he hasn't pushed to win at this point. I... And Crown Aberrant pointing on chat that he doesn't think he saw that base, but I'm a bit surprised that he hasn't looked. I mean, he appears to be looking now a bit, but I'm a bit surprised he hasn't actually checked out all the nooks and crannies in the map, because Creatoria, like most maps, has many nooks and crannies. 
So placing triads around the map is easy to do, but you can just run around and find them. It's not a big deal. So I don't see why he isn't going out, scouting this out, and trying to deal with this. His base is now back up. If Ferret goes for another Chronoport, it might be able to Chronoport to the point where the where half the base was gone. But Ferret doesn't even have the units with which to do that. He has one heavily damaged Sepipod. Nothing else. He has Octos coming up. He has enough QP to deal some deal some damage with Chronoporting. He has another Farpod coming. Actually, another two Farpods coming in. So that could help if he uses them wisely, but it's going to be very difficult for him to know when the right timing is for when a Chrono Bomb is actually effective. Another Chrono Bomb had hit here as well, but even with that, he's not taking advantage of the Chrono Bombing. He's trying to use it to weaken... Trying to use the weak Chrono Bomb a bit, but not enough. He did attack with the Zippy Pod, harassing a bit, but still in a bad position. Has to run away with that and not doing too much good. It's... Not helping Cryhammer, about a minute or so ahead. And dummy back a minute and a half. Just seeing what where that Seppi Pod is, attacking his na his biggest expansion now. His natural expansion is almost done. But his new expansion is still going strong. I'm a bit surprised that Ferrer hasn't really done much more with this. Like I said, he had timing for this far pod to deal a bunch of damage to this natural expansion, and I guess he had a timing now, which he tried to take advantage of the Seppi Pod. But really, he's focusing too much on getting in the middle of places and attacking, rather than simply attacking from the edge, where it's a lot easier to do so, especially when a Chrono Bomb is hit. But Pharopods for Ferreter are all he has left. Chrono Aberrant, a bit surprised he's not- he's sending some Octos over to try to expand here as well. We'll be finding that Ferreter has re-expanded to the southeast, but not much else. Like I said, he does not seem to be keen on finding, on ending this game. He's just dragging it out, and he's not doing a whole lot to even build game enders. No, no pod class really ready for legal class enders. His octos are coming in for expansion, but otherwise he's not doing anything. And I'm really surprised at this. This entire base here is entire is being unused completely. The octos coming in are finding what's going on here. So Ferreter has been found out once again. The other two are just going to build RPs. But probably Crown will go back and fix that up. This is... Looks like it's pretty close to the end, but really neither player has... been pushing very much to get to the end. Ferreter is... not building up much himself. He has these Farpods which have not done anything for the last few minutes. And Crown Aberrant is... Looks like both players kind of pointing out that both that both of them are probably kind of getting loopy. I mean, this has been a 45-minute game thus far. It's been more than 45 minutes. I mean, it's almost been an hour of playing this one game. Both players going back and forth, the Chrono Pouring going back and forth, having to follow what each other is doing. Chrono Emmer does have a fair amount of Octopods, which could be enough to finish this off if he cho so chooses, but he's not doing that yet. Just trying to build up the economy there, and really that's all he has. This expansion here and the one he's trying to take. And if he manages to take that, he's definitely going to have the game, but he still has it now. He just needs to end it. He needs to build up his pod class. He needs to build up a far pod or a semi pod and use that to get legal class units and just push with it. But he's not doing that. And... Not sure what he's planning on doing right now. Ferret are actually sending back a plasma cruise missile, but... Once again, to not much effect. I mean, you see a small blip on the timeline for the damage it's caused, but... Really, it's not that much. He must be trying to send back these Octos here. Ultimately damaging his own base. So I'm not sure what Karnabrant is planning on doing from here. I don't even know if... I'm starting to suspect the replay might have started to crap out a bit, but I think it's still good. I'd like for the players who are actually in this game to comment on whether or not this matches their experience of the game, because it might have been that the players are starting to get really tired and having a hard time focusing on what to do and really pushing and really remembering, oh yeah, right, I've got to end this game. Okay, Karnabrant pointing out the scene's pretty close to the actual game. So yes, the players are really just getting tired. And Cronhammer about to see where that PCM were to hit. And, oh, actually, taking care of these Octopods here. Wow. I didn't realize Ferreter even knew where those were, but nice shot there. I mean, Cronhammer definitely losing those Octopods, and that's going to be huge. Because those are Cronhammer's main fighting force at this point. But he still has enough money to build more. And he can still build more pod class units. He still needs to build more pod class units. And I think the only reason he isn't is because he's so close to the inflatable past. He hasn't really jumped into the future much to do so. 
I mean, he could really just build an overwhelming, ar overwhelmingly large army of Sepipods and Farapods and Leo class units and just take out everything that Ferritor has. Ferritor's just building up more Farapods. A few more here and there when he has the money. But it's hard to say, and... Okay, it looks like one of the Farapods did actually find these Octopods earlier on. <sighs> this one expansion, neither player really going for the end game. It's rather annoying. Kranimer moving back a couple of his Octopods to just finish off this expansion once again. So once that gets through, that's being propagated by the Red Time Wave, then that will finish it. But, well, that will finish that expansion, but I still don't think that it's going to be enough. Ferritor still has his production, he still has some economy going, and I don't know why these players are not attacking each other harder than they are now. Why are they floating so much money? Just go to the present and macro, 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 just build a ton of units. Over and over and over again. Just build massive amounts of units. That's what the present is for. The present is for macro. Anyway, Kronimer is taking care of this base once again. Is capturing it for himself. And will be taking out all these RPs. So Ferret are definitely running out of his part of his income. But he still has this expansion over here. Which, sorry, this is the main base. This expansion over here which has not been exhausted yet. Partly been exhausted but not completely. And getting rid of this reef as well. That will help, but Ferritor still hasn't lost yet. He's still building more Farapods, probably just setting up for a nice Farapod uppercut. Try to use that to just tear apart Cronamarin's bases and finish him off, because at this point Cronamarin's kind of losing the advantage he has. All of his money is in the bank, he's not spending any of it, and that's huge. If he's not spending that money, then it's kind of useless. And he is spending it more on Faros, but no, he needs to spend it on Legos. Faro Legos, Octo Legos, Sebi Legos, all of them. Just tear through what Ferritor has. But he's not doing so, and it's starting to get rather annoying, actually. But it looks like Cryammer may actually... He is actually going towards the present. He is macroing more. He is getting what he can, but not using it very well yet. And I'm not sure exactly why he's jumping back. I think... Oh. Oh, okay. Actually, it looks like their, the replay did start to screw up. Well, that sucks. Apparently there are supposed to be Sebi Legos, and there are, and these Farapods are supposed to be doing stuff. Well, I mean, 40 minutes with a Chronoport heavy match like this. So much stuff going on. Actually, more so the 40 minutes thing. The Chronoports doesn't matter, but the 40 minutes thing... That's still pretty good. 40 minutes of nothing going wrong in a replay for something like this. Not terribly bad. But yeah, these Farapods not really doing too much. One of them Chronoport back for defense, but... Not going to help much. No Sippy Legos, but there should be some. Yeah, I don't... I don't know what's happening here. So I'm just going to move this forward a bit. To see if anything meaningful happens in the next near future. But I think at this point, Ferritor... Well, it's hard to say, because the replay seems to be not playing back properly from this point on. But it looks like Ferritor is pretty much being taken down. They're probably chronoporting at this point. It's probably why they're jumping in the playable pass to see what's going on. So there probably were chronoports going on here, but I don't... I don't see any of them. I see some of them now, but I don't really see any of the rest of them. So there's really not much I can say further for what either player is doing. And it looks like, yeah, both players are just... saying what they can. Ferret are trying to defend, but like I said, this is... I'm trying to fast forward to see if who surrenders ultimately. Assuming even that carries through. That was simply a Chrono Bomb. So, a Chrono Bomb not really doing too much, trying to take out the Arcticus, but otherwise not helping. And neither player apparently doing much. So, this appears to be it. I don't see anything exciting going on that's actually happening. Ferritor is surrendering, though, and that is it. Cryomart wins the tournament. Not sure exactly how. Apparently it involves Sebi Legos. But still, that was it. That was... That's it. The entire tournament is done. Well done to Cryomart for winning the entire tournament. The 2012 Acron Christmas Tournament. Thank you once again for Rockmox for hosting. Congratulations for Ferritor for second place and Rockmox for third place. And... Gotta say... But the fact that the entire tournament, all the matches that were done, all 
however many matches there were, really. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 6, 12, 16, 18, 18, 20, 25 matches. Only one of them, and the longest one at that, and only 40 minutes in, was there any replay playback errors. So even though it's not perfect, it's a lot better than it used to be. 13, we can see stress testing it even, version 1.3 did help a lot. So I hope you enjoyed that. I apologize for the anticlimactic ending with the replay, ma replay messing up, but the rest of that game was awesome. The first game in that series was absolutely awesome, and the other games, the Ferret and Crown Aberrant, were equally awesome. It's That was a great series to cast. I'm very glad it worked out this well. Both players did wonderfully, and I'm glad to have cast them. Let you guys see all of their plays. So thank you everyone for participating. Thanks once again for Rockmash for hosting. Thank you all for watching, and have a good night, everybody.